Abandon all hope, ye who enter. Very famously the greeting to Dante's Inferno. However, despite being dramatically different, I think it's a pretty good application to three, maybe six months out of the year here to what living in Minnesota is like. Both have unlivable conditions, they're very frustrating, very cold. And honestly, it's a really tough climate to live into. I'm a resident of Minnesota. I've been here for over 30 years. I've dealt with over 30 separate winters. Um, and I've developed some tips and tricks for ways to make the weather a little bit more tolerable. And our video starts now. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Jake Lay. I'm a realtor here in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. And I absolutely love helping people like you uh, buy or sell here in the Twin Cities of Minnesota. So if you have any real estate related questions, I'd love to help you guys on your journey or even just complain about how cold it can be sometimes too, which is a lot of what this video is going to be. So I apologize in advance here too. So I put together a laundry list of some ideas that I think will help be kind of like a living document where you can look back on as you move here. You know, maybe you're doing some research about moving here and say, okay, these are some tangible things that I can do to make the most out of the winter. And if you're someone that's like out of state or isn't quite here yet, you know, I've kind of developed what I think is like a cold index to give you a sense of just how intense the cold is too. But before we get into that, we got to differentiate a couple things. We're going to be doing uh, Fahrenheit for everything. And I'm going to be dealing with true temp rather than dealing with wind chill. Wind chill is a whole nother beast. Just know as the wind gets more and more intense, these numbers plummet pretty dramatically and it can feel a whole lot colder than it actually is here too. So first we've got the comfortably chilly. Classify this as 35 degrees to 45 degrees. Here is where it's a light jacket is fine. You will see some crazies walking around in shorts. I respect them completely and they're not going to wear longs on days like this and then get by with it. You can get by with like just a light jacket, maybe even a sweatshirt if you've got, if it's not too windy, don't need a hat, don't need gloves necessarily. Moving down to what I would call the 30 to 35 degree temp, I would call this the freezing zone. Here is where you'll see trips into town or around take longer because you're starting to see freezing conditions happen on the roads. You'll find some slippery spots. You'll need to adjust to just freezing temperatures. Like all of a sudden you'll start needing to deal with like either snow plows or you'll need to deal with ice or sand or making sure that like just getting in and outside of houses that you're, you're paying attention to the footing that you're on because you might all of a sudden be on freeze points and traffic moves a lot slower. If you're doing a 30 minute drive, plan for 40 minutes or so around these temperatures. That's kind of when things are in a really uncomfortable zone. In terms of like what you need for additional condition, like for sure have pants on, have a good jacket. Doesn't need to be a super heavy one by any means. If I'm gonna be outside for any, anything longer than five minutes, I have gloves and hat on. I think that's pretty important to have covering up your ears. Between when you're in the 20s, so between 20 and 29 degrees, this is what I classify as the uncomfortably cold. Here is where a light coat could get by, but if you do that, you're gonna need a thicker thermal underneath. Like something like this, or maybe even a sweatshirt underneath your light jacket should suffice. Um, and this is where I, I typically swap out for the heavier double coat. And then ha hats and gloves are vital here. You will be dealing with some serious issues if you're outside for anything longer than a couple minutes. In the teens, this is, this is what I call the brisk abyss. It's it, where, where you should only be outside for anything that like you like quote unquote need to do, which I classify as like food and errands. Although you're, you're really prioritizing the errands you have to do fitness, or maybe if you have like important work meetings, but anything outside of that, you just see a whole lot less happening. There's less people going out to eat for dinner. There's less people on the road doing things that don't require like need to do things. Hey, just real quick. Let's make a real quick gentleman's agreement. If you're enjoying this video and you find it informative, how about you click that, that subscribe subscribe button. The reason we call it the gentleman's agreement is I have no idea if you're doing it or not. We're just making a gentleman's agreement. You watch the video, you subscribe. And if you need anything, just give me a call. Thanks. Below that, I'd say once we get into the single digits, this is the unbearably cold. Here, life isn't fun. You dread going to your car for even the most uh, exciting of reasons. You know, like uh, this, there's a time of the year I typically go on vacation in, in January and we get really close to this um, sub 10 degree weather. I like hate getting in my car coming back from the airport because it's so freaking cold. Any time spent outside is miserable. It's uncomfortable. Avoid at all costs. And then once you get into under zero, the sub zero temperatures, which don't happen all the time, you'll see it some early mornings and then you'll see it if we ever get polar vortexes. This is what I classify as the why do I live here cold? You're not a true Minnesota until you until you utter those this phrase in the in the intense of winter. The first tip for overcoming the the cold of winter is to dress in layers. Everyone always says it. Layers help. Layers help. Layers help. Layers help. Particularly when you're going in and coming out of the seasons, you'll enter the morning where it'd be like uncomfortably cold, and you'll end the day comfortably chilly. So you'll see like a ton of different scales. And if I have like a sweatshirt and then a light jacket, or maybe even like a, a long sleeve underneath that, I can adjust that 
given the course of each day and I'm not carrying anything super bulky on, I can kind of live life that way. Number two is invest in quality winter gear. I can't say this enough. I know no one likes buying like coats that can be hundreds and hundreds of dollars where, where there's cheaper options. The ones that are more expensive typically last years and years. Like I, I've used the same Patagonia light jacket for over 10 years. It's still in great shape. The companies that you're gonna know more about they're gonna just do a better job of keeping you warm long-term. Most of them have like really nice warranties long-term, like Patagonia's got a lifetime warranty. I freaking love the company. They do such great things in the world. Make sure you have some like nice quality winter boots too. Even if you're not spending a ton of time outside, even if you're just shoveling for like five minutes, doing that in some type of sneakers can be miserable. Have a couple extra pairs of wool socks. The nicer, the better, so they feel comfortable on your feet. You know, I don't really have snow pants because I don't go skiing or anything like that, but that's always a good idea too. Have more of everything. Have a couple extra sets of gloves because if you lose one one glove, well, what do I do now? So I always have two sets in my car. I have one lighter, one heavier one. Quality is important to make sure you have spares of everything too. Number three is protect your extremities. This is such a no brainer too. Every year you see instances of people not planning appropriately. Maybe they're outside, maybe they get lost somewhere and they end up having some serious accidents happen to their hands and their feet where they might even need to get um, fingers and toes removed too. Be super smart about protecting your extremities, gloves, hats, all that stuff. Keep warm and keep dry. That's the most important things. Number four tip to surviving the Minnesota winter isn't as much to do with outside. It's more to do in your home too. And that's just winterizing your home, making sure your sprinkler system, if you have one, has been blown out properly so that you don't have any leaks um, caused by turning it on next year or having a freeze happen. Winterizing your um, exterior soffits, that's super important. Making sure that you have your HVAC serviced before getting into the year so you don't have any issues as the year goes on, or at least you limit your, your amount of issues possible. I know a lot of other people, if they have got older windows, they put up um, those little sealant things around their windows. Buy those early in the season because they sell out of them super quickly and not a lot of people buy them in January, you know, when you need them the most. Things like that, that you can do to get ahead of that is gonna make a world of difference to having a little bit more comfortable winter. Okay, number five is vehicle preparation. Now this one's super big and I think a lot of people that haven't dealt with intense colds don't really realize it. Vehicles break down when it gets super cold. Couple things to make sure you do is make sure you get that oil change earlier in the season. If you drive a gas car, make sure it's filled up at all times, fill it up more often than you'd like to. Consider investing in getting an auto start put onto your car. That allows you to basically push a button and it turns on automatically so that you can heat up your vehicle while, you know, maybe you're still in the office or, or you know, getting running your errands or whatever you might be doing. So you're going into a warm car. And then on hand, have a couple of snacks available, have an emergency kit just in case, have a couple of extra blankets. I say put like water and food in here. That's a little bit tougher to do because, um, you know, water freezes, food freezes. But if there's ever a way that you can do something like that, that's always good. And then some type of shovel or really some type of snow and ice remover too. Um, you don't wanna have to be like grabbing a credit card from your wallet to scrape off the ice on the exterior too. Number six, make sure you're staying informed about the weather too. Probably made a lot of jokes on this channel about, you know, if you don't like the weather here, just wait five minutes. Couldn't be more true this time of the year too. You need to be in touch with what is going on with the weather because unlike when somewhere in the South has a hurricane coming, you don't really hear about it quite as much. Like sure you might hear about intense cold coming through, but within a day or two, you can go from like a comfortable weather, a comfortable cold to like, oh my God, what is going on here? This is unlivable in a matter of a day. So be in touch with the weather. Honestly, you can do as much as just pulling up your app in the, in the morning. You don't need to be like tuned into the weather news every single day. Just pull up the weather map, see what it's looking like. Um, during the cold season like this and you'll, and you'll be in good shape too. Number seven is find some winter activities that you actually enjoy doing. This, I'll, I'll be the first to say, one of the reasons I struggle so much in winter is I don't have a lot of things to do. I don't like skiing. I don't like snowboarding. I don't like snowmobiling. I, I don't like being out in the cold. I tried uh, fat tire biking. Couldn't really get into that as well too. I'm not a big hunter. I don't, I don't really, um, I'm never on ice fishing. If anyone wants to take me, I'd be willing to give it a shot. I don't have a lot of things I do outside in the winter. So all of a sudden I go from all these like fun activities that I'm doing outdoors, going for great walks, playing golf, you know, hikes, runs, all that stuff to all of a sudden nothing. It's always really tough for me. So I, I prioritize finding some type of winter activity that you enjoy doing that's really dedicated for the winter. That would be priority one. Like what I do is I have a couple different basketball leagues that keep me outside of the house more often than not this time of the year. 
Um, find something that works for you. Find something that you enjoy doing, something that you can look forward to. People that do the best with winter are the ones that have those things. And to piggyback on that point as well too, is socialize and stay active. Like it's really easy for us to just go indoors and not see our friends for months and months on end. Do what you can to, to make that dinner work, even though the sun's gonna set at 420 and everyone can't make it there until six o'clock. Like it feels burdensome, but you will be so much happier if you just invest that time into being with other people that you wouldn't similar to to during the you know the peak summer seasons as well so so invest that time in in staying active with people not just staying active inside and then i'd say the final point is just take care of yourself too it's really easy it's really easy to get caught up in unhealthy habits like one awful thing that happens is the air gets so cold and everyone's skin gets dry people struggle with dandruff and lotions you know have lotion on you, you know, take care of your hands, take care of your face, things like that. Make sure you're, you're eating the best way possible, that you're stay high, staying hydrated. And if you're going outside, make sure you're having a plan to stay warm and to stay dry. And if you're gonna go do something really cool like cross country steam, make sure you're staying modestly close to a vehicle or a way out and that you, you don't get lost. The things happen and people get really hurt. Basically what what's happening when, when the weather gets extremely unlivable cold like this, we're almost putting ourselves in an unlivable situation for long periods of time that we've made livable by just like all the advancements in like clothing and technology that we've been able to have. But just be mindful of that. Stay close by, um, stay close by and stay safe and, and you'll, do, you'll do well in the winters. That's kind of the list. The only other thing I can say is like, it's really tough, but plan for daylight savings time changes. The worst time of the year is there's like a month, month and a half period where you go to work and it's sun, it's uh, it's dark out, you come home and it's dark out. No one likes it, but it's just a fact of reality. So make sure you reach, reach out if you have any questions about real estate or just wanna chat and make sure you're subscribing uh, to the channel. Talk to you guys soon.